Hi, uh, today was the first day of uh, Marty's trial. Uh, I got back from court and uh, we started at 9 a.m. and we went till about 3.30 today. I'm just going to fill people in on how it went and what happened. Uh, forgive me if I look down, I'm uh, looking at some of my notes that I took today. Um, so the first thing that happened is we all came in and um, um, the lawyers, not including Marty, met with the judge at the sidebar. Um, they went back into the back of the court, um, like outside of the main court uh, courtroom and I guess into chambers or something um, for some kind of meeting. Uh, then everyone returns and uh, the judge brings in the jury. So he swears in the jury. Uh, he reminds them of their obligation to listen to the facts and uh, decide without prejudice and only listen to the facts in the courtroom and not uh, social media or things they hear outside of the courtroom. Um, excuse me. Um, after he does that, Marty says to the jury, he says, Judge Gorton's associates accept $50,000 from the alleged victims in this case, or something to that effect. And Judge Gorton says, don't talk, <laughs> tells Marty not to talk, um, certainly and angrily. Um, and then they begin opening statements. So, uh, David Diadio uh, gave the opening statement for the government. Uh, you might also know David by his other name, Sideshow Diadio, um, for his willingness and inability to avoid stepping on rakes, as, you'll, as you uh, can see in some of Marty's articles. Um, okay. So, um, <clears throat> Diadio begins by talking about uh, me and my brother, who was at Logan River Academy, a troubled teen industry school in uh, Utah. And, um, and then he goes into BCH, Boston Children's Hospital, and then he goes into Wayside. Uh, he says that in the, uh, in the coming testimony, people will talk about you know how it affected them, stuff like that. Um, and then Grimaldi goes, Marty's attorney. Now Grimaldi says, I want to... You know, all to start on the same page. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Let me go back to Diadio for a second. Uh, Diadio, in his opening statement, played clips. Um, so he showed uh, some of the Huffington Post article, Why I Knocked Boston Children's Hospital Off the Internet. He played the video, um, the anonymous video announcing Op Justina. He showed uh, tweets on the screen um, and uh, he says who would be testifying so like some names locations um, for example there's gonna be tomorrow's gonna start with um, a man named John Santos um, from Lowell Massachusetts and, uh, t today we went over um, some people from Wayside and a um, Framingham police officer all right so, uh, back to Grimaldi. So, Grimaldi um, says, let's just all start on the same page. Uh, it's true that Marty initiated the DDoS um, at Boston Children's Hospital and at Wayside. And uh, we'll show you the full Huffington Post article. And um, you'll see that it's not as, you know, it's not what the government is trying to make it sound like. Um, so Marty grew up, so he, he explained to the jury that Marty grew up in Andover, Massachusetts, and, uh, he got into technology at a young age, like five, and he's been practicing technology for, uh, by 2013, 2014, over a decade. He started selling code when he was, uh, still in, uh, middle school and then um, in high school and then he got a job after that and he's very um, interested and invested in human rights. Um, Grimaldi makes the uh, makes the nuanced argument that um, you know whatever 
Marty initiated the DDoS, but um, that does not meet the government's burden of proof for the statutes. It doesn't meet the federal crimes that they're charging him with. Um, Grimaldi talked about Justina, and he said that these DDoSs were, you know, the middle of her story. Not the beginning, not the end, but, you know, just about in the middle. Um, uh, just a note, I, uh, for clarification, I had thought that Justina wasn't going to be allowed to be mentioned at trial, but what's not going to be allowed is um, defense of another, defense of necessity. That's what was precluded, but Justina was brought up and talked about at trial today. Uh, so just like a feel for the courtroom. Um, started off, it was packed, just like to the brim. Um, a lot of U.S. attorney people, um, but you know, they left as in a little bit of reporters, or reporter, um, but they left as time went by, so like they had a bunch of interns come in for some reason that left in the middle of Diadio's speech or his opening and then the U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling and Christina Stur uh, Diorio, I think, Sterling, um, the U.S. Spokes uh, off U.S. Attorney's Office spokesperson, she left uh, with the U.S. Attorney after Diadio's opening remarks and then um, a bunch of other people left uh, after the openings. Um... Okay. So the first witness that we heard from was uh, a man from Wayside Youth and Family. He does their tech support. So um, Costo asked, so Costo is the second U.S. attorney along with, um, along with David Diadio, and he brought up, you know, they had a whiteboard set up for him, and they asked him to just draw some pictures so he drew uh, a cloud in the middle to represent the internet and then some boxes surrounding it to represent like their different locations like Framingham, I think they have a few, Medford, a few other locations and then like draw lines showing how they connect. Um, anyways, it was boring. Um, so basically he just kind of went over um, what it what he thought, what it felt like for him when it was happening, and um, about how they bought a DDoS protection called Cloudflare and uh, charged overtime for working on it extra. Um, then uh, the judge called a break. It was supposed to be 15 minutes, but it ended up being, felt like much longer, maybe like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so Gorton, when he got back, Gorton called, um, he called, well, it started off as 15 minutes, then he got back, then he called the lawyers, except for Marty, uh, to the sidebar with, with white noise. Now, they do white noise, so, um, people won't hear what they're saying. And then, um, so, uh, sorry. So, Costo, Diadio, and Gordon went to the back, and, uh, they spoke for a while, and then they came back. I don't know what happened. Um, then he, then uh, Gordon brings back the jury. So uh, Costa starts back up. I think uh, this witness's name was um, uh, McKeon, and um, McKeon was a private con uh, a consultant, I believe. Um, so Grimaldi asked him some questions like. Um, you know, could you guys still use faxes? Could you guys still use telephones? Like, what, what were, you know, in terms of the impact, like, could you still run your business type of thing? Um, uh, Grimaldi also asked him about, uh, the protests that were happening for Justina at, at, uh, Wayside. Um... Costo tried to object to Justina's name being mentioned multiple times. Sometimes Gorton uh, overruled it. Sometimes he sustained it, meaning he would allow it, or he said, uh, you know, it had to be stricken from the record. Um, uh, let's see. Um, when Grimaldi did the redirect, uh, when Grimaldi spoke to this man, um, uh, he did a brief redirect. Um, uh, I think McKeaton um, 
or Keaton, whatever, said, um, you know, he can't control who accesses the website, as in, like, a DDoS is a very high level of traffic. Um, so, you know, whether it's a DDoS or whether a lot of people just visit the website at one time, you know, this guy and Wayside can't control it um, one way or the other. Um, next, the next witness that the government called was named Larry Hendry. He's a former police officer or um, maybe a detective with the Framingham Police Department. Now he works at TJ, TJX uh, Comps in Framingham, which is, he works part of a global investigation team. Um, for the last five years, he's worked on, like, digital media forensic labs. Um, and basically they went, so, um, uh, when H Hendry was Googling and became aware of Justina's story because it was happening at Wayside in Framingham, and, uh, he took screenshots at the time of tweets allegedly sent, um, by Marty and, uh, which they're calling, um, they have different Twitter accounts, um, they're, I'm not, I'm actually not sure if they're saying that they're sent by Marty or not, um, because I don't think that they are, um, they, they have this guy called Digita Ghost and Anon Mercurial, and, uh, basically they just showed the tweets on, on the screen and, um, talked about taking screenshots and stuff like that, um, Then uh, Grimaldi did a cross-examination, um, and, you know, he, he was sure to ask, like, were you aware of what was happening with Justina and, you know, of the protests, and, and, uh, Costa was upset by that. He objected to protests coming up, um, and, uh, Gorton said, you know, he'll consider the relevance. So that's kind of an open question right now. Um, then we took a lunch break, and then when we came back, the lawyers met at sidebar. And um, then Costo brings back in uh, Hendry, who's this former police officer from Framingham. And Grimaldi uh, continues with his line of questioning. Um, the Basically, the paste bin, they show the paste bin, they show tweets, um, and they just go over the tweets again, like, ad nauseum. Um, all right, so the next witness that the government calls is named Sarah McCabe. She is, um, a VP at Wayside, she oversees programming, she has like 200 people working under her, and she reports to the CEO. Uh, so she tells us a little bit about Wayside, about their uh, demographic, who they serve, where they're, lo where they're located, um, how many people they serve per year, which is about nine to, 900 to 1,000 kids, and uh, how most people come from the Department of Children and Families. Um, most placements come from that. Um, she said that she expected Justina to be at Wayside for four year, uh, four weeks. And she also talked about some of the workarounds that they had to do. So instead of emails, they did calls, they did meetings, they printed stuff out and just like put them on the wall. Um, Grimaldi um, cross-examined her, um, asked her some questions about uh, you know, what it was like, and about Justina, and, um, th if they could still, you know, do their work, um, besides for email, given all the alternatives. He also asked her if she was familiar with a telephone call placed from the Wayside, placed from the Wayside campus to the police department. Now, if you'll remember, while well, Justina was there, and this didn't come up today, but, um, her family called the police because she was in the shower and a staff came in and opened it, opened it and started yelling at her while she was naked, um, which is very abusive. Um, but the uh, 
the uh, VP denied knowledge of, you know, much of that situation. Um, then Diadio came back for a redirect, um, and, uh, asked her about the meetings, um, or if anyone has ever authorized a DDoS. Um, Grimaldi came back for another redirect for recross examination. It was brief. And, uh, then we wrapped for the day. So that was at 325. Um, tomorrow we're going to start again at 9 a.m. Um, there's about, uh, there's about six people who are going to be called as witnesses tomorrow, beginning with John Santos. John used to live in Somerville, um, used to play poker, um, with Marty, and then he moved to Lowell. Um, there's also some, uh, FBI agents as well. So that's going to start tomorrow, and that's a recap of what happened today in a nutshell. Um, yeah, and uh, we should have um, some more information coming out, and uh, stay tuned and we'll keep you updated. Thank you.